My father was a collector. I remember as a child that dad had this old cabinet in his office. It had 96 drawers in it. I believe it was one of the old library card catalogs. Each drawer contained some little mystery that Jess and I would uh, explore on a rainy Sunday afternoon. The contents were eclectic, seemingly unrelated. Um, and as an engineer, I'm somewhat embarrassed here to say that I was never very systematic about my explorations, um, but I picked them at random. So one drawer held an old harmonica. Um, another one held uh, coins from all over the world. You know, one of them held uh, little model airplanes. And one of my favorites was this drawer that was full of keys. Um, some of them were, you know, just some old random lost house key. Some of them looked like some Victorian era skeleton key. The, the partnering lock has long been lost to this world. Each of these things was a little small piece of something that dad carried along and with him along in his life. So over the past few weeks, um, friends and family have been sharing a lot of their memories and experiences that they had with dad and where dad touched their lives. To me, this feels like diving back into those drawers. Sometimes I learned something completely new about dad that I'd never known before. He wrote poetry? I had no idea. <laughs> You'll get to hear a sample of that from Susan in a little bit here. And sometimes it was just reliving some old fond memory. Um, for example, on a Saturday morning with our breakfast, dad used to put a little bit of blue food coloring in the milk and try to convince us that we were drinking alien Zork milk. <laughs> Another one of dad's collections was jokes. Um, so my sister Jess had encouraged me to read a passage from one of dad's favorite books here, uh, Dave Barry's Complete Guide to Guys. But, you know, I figured it would probably be more appropriate to give you an example of a joke that was actually on dad's level. Um, so what's brown and sticky? A stick. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? A carrot. Or my personal favorite, what's black and white and black and white and black and white and black and white? Well, obviously, it's a penguin rolling down a hill. <laughs> so. and, and just in case you weren't aware, Dad was just as happy collecting groans as he was laughter. <laughs> Dad's good nature and friendly humor also led to one of Dad's best collections. That was his friends. And I'm sure that wherever Dad went, he made friends. And he kept them and carried them along with him throughout his life. And you can see people from all walks of his life here today. And I'm sure many of you are blessed to be considered among those friends. But when we look at all the pieces that touch our lives, we start to see certain aspects that truly define who we are and threads that are carried along with us. I think Dad had really four of those that stood out. Fire service. Um, this was Dad's career and the work and community that made up the bulk of his professional life. It re represented his biggest collection. Um, and those of you not in fire protection would not believe how many different types of hose nozzles and sprinkler heads exist. <laughs> but Dad had at least one of each. <laughs> Second, amateur radio. This was a hobby that Dad carried with him throughout his life. Uh, NP2N was his call sign. Um, so if you ever saw a vehicle uh, with NP2N, that was a radio call sign, it was not Neptune. Um, but he talked to people from every corner of the earth. Um, and you never wanted to be watching TV as a kid when dad participated in the DX contest. The booming signal that he transmitted caused interference in every little bit of household electronics whenever he would transmit. Um, as part of this, he volunteered to give tests to those looking to get their license, including yours truly, KC0IEI. I have good memories of sitting up late at, uh, with him working one of the contests. Him getting excited as I was able to check off a new country off the list for myself. But you know, he already had all of them. <laughs> he even convinced his sister Susan to get her license. Um, and she now has the honor of owning Death Original Call Sign K0 EDA. A third area that was very important to Dad was quiet, peaceful solitude. And this was really how Dad would relax. And it manifested in two ways throughout his life. One was another of his hobbies, uh, fishing. 
Um, you know, you may have seen some pictures of some fish that were up here earlier. But it was clear that uh, he was happy just being out on the water. Uh, after a day of no bites, you'd ask him how fishing was. And his response was always, fishing is always good. The catching, not so much. <laughs> the second manifestation of this to Dad uh, was a place that he loved. Um, and it was a small cabin that he built in the outskirts of Boone um, on just a couple of acres. This was a place that he loved and was really proud of. And lastly, family was important to Dad. He was always there for sporting events, band concerts, always ready to celebrate any accomplishments and always there for us if life had us in a tough spot. I'm pretty sure Dad's mantra was, we live for our kids. And while we usually heard it after asking him to do something that would inconvenience him, I do think that he meant it all the time. Approximately six years ago, though, our family had a major tragedy hit. Dad suffered a massive stroke, and it was se severe enough that Dad was wheelchair-bound with limited use of the left half of his body. And he was unable to live on his own. But as would be expected from anybody, this caused a pretty massive shift in Dad's life. Um, but Dad was able to rebuild a home here at Green Hills, and the caring staff here